Previously, on the Tesla documentary series, Tesla had a near-death experience, recovered to post their first profitable quarter, which sent their stock from $30 to over $120. And to keep the momentum going, Tesla held an event to dismantle another EV objection. When we designed the Model S, we actually thought, well, we should preserve the optionality. So what if people do want to, what if people do want to switch out um, the, their battery pack? What if they, if they only want to stop for a short period of time? And when you come to the, back, to, to the Tesla station, it shouldn't be really called the supercharging station, it should just be called the Tesla station. Um, you have the choice of uh, the supercharger, which is and always will be free, or you have the, char the, the choice of a battery pack swap, which is faster than you can fill a gas tank. So the only decision you need to make when you come to one of our Tesla stations is do you prefer faster or free? <laughs> We, we filmed a gas station. The gas station's on the big screen, and there's the, there's the battery pack getting swapped out with some festive lights. Yeah, lo looks, like, looks like we've got some extra time. Um, so, since we've got some extra time, let's, let's do another one. All right, all up. So hopefully this, this, this is the, hopefully this is what convinces people finally that electric cars are the future. Shortly after, Tesla reported Q2 earnings with revenue coming in at 405 million, a net loss of 31 million, and 747 million in cash on hand following their capital raise along with 5,150 Model S deliveries for the quarter. The results beat expectations, and Tesla stock powered up to an all-new high of $153. The good news continued to come in for Tesla. Tesla's Model S electric car has sometimes been dismissed as a novelty, a cutting-edge toy for the rich. But America's youngest car company is enjoying a run of good news that has nothing to do with being the new kid on the assembly line. This week, CEO Elon Musk announced the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration has given his Model S sedan the highest safety rating in its history of testing cars. When we did the roof crush test, um, in, in, it, it got to four times the weight of the car and then the machine broke. So the, 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 literally the, 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 the roof, the, the thing that's supposed to crush the car broke instead of the car. <laughs> so, that's when you know your car is tough. Yeah, it's, it's tough. It's a long way from 2008, when the fledgling company almost went bankrupt. Its critics called Tesla a house of cards that would collapse due to the lack of electric car charging stations and an unproven driving record. I think what Tesla and Elon Musk are trying to do is go by those criticisms one by one and do it very methodically, address those. You know, do we have good performance? Yes, Motor Trend says that we did. Do we have good safety? Yes, NHTSA has said that we are a very safe car. I think we can produce an affordable, long-range, compelling electric car in about three to four years. Three to four years. Yeah. Statements like that are no longer considered boastful. In fact, traditional car companies like General Motors have now formed teams to study Tesla and learn from its success. As August rolled around, Elon released the blueprints for another revolutionary form of transportation. People packed into a pod blasted across hundreds of kilometers in mere minutes. Sounds like the stuff of fiction, not science, but consider the source. I have a name for it, name for it which is called the Hyperloop. 
That's Elon Musk, the man behind PayPal, the electric car company Tesla, and private space company SpaceX. Today, Musk released blueprints for a pod-style bullet train. No tracks needed, just a tube held up by pylons, using airflow similar to a good old air hockey table and the same engineering principles that helped suck mail through tubes back in the day. Musk figures passengers could travel from L.A. to San Francisco in about 30 minutes. Maximum speed, a smooth 1,200 kilometers an hour. This is designed to be super light, um, and trains are just amazingly heavy. But this is designed more like an aircraft. Tesla stock continued its rally, reaching an all-time high of $170. But then we get news of more competition coming, this time from BMW, a company renowned for their engineering and stylish design. Well, I'm, I'm glad to see that BMW is bringing an electric car to market. Um, that's cool. Um, the, I, I think there's, um, there's room to improve on the i3, I and I hope that they do. Um, you know, my comments about other <laughs> manufacturers... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> good news. Tesla Motors open up an assembly plant in Tilburg, Netherlands and deliver the first Tesla Model S vehicles to customers in the Netherlands, Belgium, France and Germany. The new facility serves as Tesla's European service and parts headquarters. The new site takes in mostly completed Model S vehicles from the Fremont factory and then undertakes final assembly to get them ready for customer shipments around the continent. In other news from Europe, Tesla started to roll out the supercharger network in Norway, one of Tesla's emerging markets, to give new Model S buyers the freedom to drive throughout most of the country. With a string of positive news events for Tesla over the last six months, it was no surprise that the stock continued to soar. But then... There are new questions about the safety of Tesla's flagship Model S sedan after a video was posted on car site Jalopnik, one of the electric cars on fire. The incident happened Tuesday outside Seattle and was captured on video by people driving by. In a statement, Tesla tells Bloomberg West the fire was caused by the direct impact of a large metallic object to one of the 16 modules within the Model S battery pack because each module within the battery pack is by design isolated by fire barriers to limit any potential damage. The fire in the battery pack was contained to a small section in the front of the vehicle. Nobody was hurt, but what is getting hurt are Tesla shares. They've shed about 12% since yesterday, dragging Tesla's market cap down by about $3 billion. And it didn't take long for the critics to raise their concerns. Martin Vinterkorn, who, who knows a bit about making cars, being the boss of VW, said he was startled. Those are the words he, that was the word he used, startled by the fire. Uh, why why well, do you think he was startled? I don't know, because... Uh, VW has thousands of car fires every year. He's investing a lot of money in this technology. He says his is safe. He, uh, again, I don't know what the implication of that is. I mean, BMW literally has several thousand fires every year in their cars. VW, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so I'm not sure why he'd be startled by one in an electric car. You know, in our case, it, it, it was hit by a large piece of metal at high speed. Um, and if that were to have, say, punctured a gasoline tank or gasoline supply lines, the car would have been in a conflagration. It would have been it would have burnt to the ground. If this was an isolated event, the story would have most likely gone away. But it wasn't. Now bad news for Tesla Motors. It's now the target of a federal investigation because the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration said today it's launching an investigation into why two of the company's Model S vehicles have caught fire this year. It's just the latest PR nightmare for Tesla, which once was just a company that could do no wrong. Last week, actor George Clooney got involved, telling Esquire magazine, I was one of the first cats with a Tesla, but I'm telling you, I've been on the side of the road a while in that thing. And I said to them, look, guys, why am I always stuck on the side of the effing road? Tesla CEO Elon Musk was uh, upset with that and responded to Clooney on Twitter with, in other news, George Clooney reports that his iPhone 1 had a bug back in 2007. That brings me to tonight's number, 35%, which is how much Tesla's shares have sank since its high at the end of September. Elon Musk isn't that worried about what's happening. Obviously, investors are. For the year, though, this stock is still through the moon. Elon again tried to put things into perspective, stating that it was a major impact 
and that most importantly, due to the safety of the car, the driver was uninjured. The car actually sheared off something like 17 feet of curb wall, then went through <laughs> a concrete wall, then smashed into a tree. <laughs> It's like holy crow. On November 8th, things went from bad to worse for Tesla, as a third fire was reported after a vehicle ran over a tow hitch on a roadway, causing damage beneath the vehicle, which caused the car to experience a fire. The media ran with the story, and this time the stock fell 24% over a three-day period, falling back to $137. On November the 15th, in a garage in Irvine, California, a fire broke out where a Tesla Model S was plugged in and charging, which made it the fourth reported fire in less than two months. When news broke, the stock dropped a further 10% to $121. By now, Tesla was in damage control, and Elon tried his best to put things into perspective. You've heard all the the oh, press yeah. about Tesla. So Trust let me, me first give you a chance to get it off your chest. <laughs> I mean, like pistol whipped. <laughs> Three cars caught yeah. on fire. What's your response? So um, the, the amount of na national and international news headlines dedicated to three Tesla fires that caused no injury um, is, is greater than all of the gasoline fires that occurred in the, in the United States. And, the, and With and, all the other cars. Yeah, w w which uh, from mid last year to today is about a quarter million gasoline car fires which caused about 400 deaths, something like 1,200 serious uh, injuries. Our three non-injurious fires got more national headlines than a quarter million deadly gasoline car fires. That's mad. What the heck is going on? I mean, I realize like a new technology should, uh, just, should have a spotlight on it, but it shouldn't have a laser on it. <laughs> In other news from November, George Blankenship VP of Worldwide Retail Sales, leaves Tesla. Following his departure, he listed himself as Director of Smiles and Planner at the Blankenship family. During his three years at Tesla, he was successful at creating the Apple-type vibe for the Tesla brand via the retail stores. And with that story, that concludes the year of 2013. In a year that Tesla stock started out at $34 and ended the year at $150, up 341% and absolutely crushed the short sellers in an epic short squeeze, made a Q1 profit which couldn't have come at a better time, raised a billion in capital, paid off their DOE loan nine years early, started selling the Model S into Europe, but had to go into damage control due to several fires that occurred with the Model S. And the story continues in the next episode, the year of 2014. Thank you to all the Patreons that make these episodes possible. And remember, all content is opinion only and not financial advice. So till next time, I'll catch you guys soon.